Hey y'all, welcome back to Refined in the Fire, Come Out Like Gold. Bless Kenya here back again with another wonderful episode. And I'm going to be doing something a little bit different this week. i um, going to be doing the resurrection. I'm going to be reading Matthew 28. So if you have your Bibles, please read along or if not, just listen along to the beautiful words of the gospel of Christ. And again, like, share, subscribe these things to the unlikeliest person to whom you think wouldn't listen to it and just listen along to the gospel. So in Matthew 28, the NLT version says, Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene, that's the woman who Jesus cast the demon out of, and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell in a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the woman, Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. And he said it with authority. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him and grasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. As the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and told the leading priest what had happened. A meeting with the elders was called, and they decided to give the soldiers a large bribe. Hmm, wonder why. <laughs> they told the soldiers, you must say, Jesus, disciples came during the night while we were sleeping, and they stole his body. Hmm. If the governor hears about it, we'll stand up for you so you won't get in trouble. Hush money, as we call it, right? <laughs> so the guards accepted the bribe and said what they were told to say. Their story spread widely among the Jews, and they still tell it today. Well, back in that day. Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And this is the key scripture here from 17 to 20. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. These are the same men that had just spent the last three years walking with Jesus Christ, eating with Jesus Christ, living and camping with Jesus Christ, leaving their friends, seeing him turn water into wine, seeing him heal the sick, raise the dead, uh, heal the lepers, cast out demons, seeing him put uh, demons into pigs that ran and jumped in the water, heard demons talk. I mean, these are people that saw miracles that probably weren't recorded in the Bible. But some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of age. And some other says, lo, I am with you always. So I just want to talk a little bit about um, verse 17, where it says, when they saw him. So when we see something, we see with our eyes. To see and also saw means to see with the mind. Like, oh, I saw this vision or I, I saw this to imagine is to see with the mind, right? 
to perceive and to know, to become acquainted with and by experience. So we can become acquainted with by experience with seeing. So I can see if the fire is on on the stove, I can see and I and I, if I saw the fire, I know by experience. I'm not going to touch that because that's hot. And also saw means to to take heed to, to behold, to turn the thoughts or direct the mind to a thing. So behold means to direct our mind to a thing. If I could say, behold, there's a star in the sky. We're going to direct our mind to look up and to behold the thing. We, we're considerate, we're contemplating, to look at, to weigh carefully and to examine. Mm. So that's what saw. So we can say, when they examined him, when they carefully weighed him, when they looked at Jesus, when they contemplated and considered Jesus, when they directed their mind to Jesus, right? When they turned their thoughts to Jesus, when they experienced him, when they became acquainted to him, when they perceived, when they, with the mind, when they saw him with the mind, they worshiped him. So why is it, it says, when they saw him, those who became acquainted with Jesus, those who directed their mind to him, those who considered him, those who contemplated him, examined him carefully, why did they doubt? Hmm. That's what we have to ask ourselves, that when we see Jesus, are we going to worship him, knowing who he is, or are we going to doubt him? Are we going to worship the Christ, knowing that he saved us, knowing that he's done miracles, knowing that he is the way, the truth, and the life, or are we going to still continue to doubt? So what is doubt truly? Yes, we know that doubting is the lack of faith. Doubt means the opposite of faith, right? But doubting means mentally to waver in opinion. Wow. So that means that you're established in one opinion, but then you start to waver. Waver means like a, a wave that's tossed to and fro. Waver means like, <laughs> you ever see those, um, I think they're so silly, those um, blow up little things that's like floating all around, you know, outside the car dealership. That's to waver. That's to waver. It means refusal. It means abandonment. It means rejection or deferral. So that means that when some saw him, they contemplated, they examined him, they worshiped him, they beheld him, they, they, they lowered themselves before the Christ. But when some others saw him, they abandoned him in their mind. They rejected him, the Christ, the one who they examined, the one who they were with, the one who they directed their mind to. They abandoned him. They rejected him. They deferred him. They wavered in opinion and had refusal in their mind. Oof. So when we come to know the Christ, when this Holy Week, will we worship him or will we doubt him? Will we examine and contemplate to know him more or will we refuse him and reject him? We can speak with our lips, oh Lord, you are the Christ. But in our hearts, is it close to him or is it far away from him? And only he knows. He weighs the hearts. He tests and examines our hearts. The second thing that came up for me that I want to share is he said, and he knew, he knew that they were going to doubt him, but still he came with an agenda and assignment because even those that doubted still did the assignment of the Lord because he knew that if he spoke of the identity of who he is and spoke to their identity, then that would change their heart. So he says, I have been given all authority in heaven, heaven and on earth. So he was speaking of his identity. It's not the what, as the Lord was sharing with me now, sharing with my friend earlier. It's not the what, it's the who. The who has the power. So he said, I, Jesus, the Christ, have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. And then he says to them, which is, I love this part. Therefore, go, go is an action word, right? And make disciples of all the nations, meaning the things that I taught you, go and teach to them. Who I am is now in you. Now I want you to go. He says, baptizing them 
in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, baptizing them in the triune God, baptizing them in the Father God of heaven, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit of God so that they can have the Holy Spirit as well. As we are body, soul, spirit, and God is Father, Son, Spirit, the three become one, we are three, one, and we need the one and one to make a whole, to make one. I never liked when people say, oh, a relationship is 50-50. No, it's not. <laughs> a relationship is I bring some, you bring some. No, what I learned in math, and I'm not the best in math because that's just not my subject, but what I do remember in school is that a whole in a whole makes a whole. Half and half doesn't really make a whole because it's broken. And if it's broken and comes apart, then it can still be broken. But if you're one and God is one and you come together, then you're still whole. He makes you whole. So it says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach. Hmm. So he said, in 19, go and make disciples of all nations, right? Now he's saying, again, this is another way of him saying it. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And he says, be sure of this. So he actually is giving them the command twice. He says, and be sure of this. In the King James Version, it says, lo, which means behold, right? And we know what behold means, right? To see with our eyes, to see with our mind, to examine a thing, contemplate. In the King James Version, it says, Lo, I am with you always. In the New Living Translation, it says, And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of age. So Jesus was giving them, honestly, an assignment that was kind of scary because some doubted and some worshipped. And those who doubted and worshipped, he was seeing as one. He was saying, Hey, I'm showing you my identity. I have all power and authority in heaven and earth. I give you my identity. And I want you to take this identity and go make disciples. And then he says again, teach these new disciples to obey, to submit to, to listen to, to follow all the commands that I have already given you throughout this time. And he says, and be sure of this. And he's saying this to confirm to me, to you, to anyone who's listening. He was saying to the disciples, as we are disciples of Christ, Lo, behold, examine, see with your mind, know, become acquainted with, experience, take heed of, contemplate, look at, weigh carefully. I am with you always. Again, the identity, the identity of Christ. He's saying, I am with you, with, together, to be entangled with, always, even to the end of age. Always is never ending. And I want to share real quick on always. Do you know the meaning of the word always in, um, I don't know if it's Greek or Hebrew, but it means individually. It means each, every, any, all, the whole, everything. So he's saying to us, I, the Christ, am with you individually. I am with you blessed every day. I am with you beloved each day. I am with you any day. I am with you all days, good, bad, crying, happy, sad, whatever, joyous occasion. I am with the whole you, body, soul, mind, and spirit. I am with everything in you, even to the end of age. From the time that you were conceived in your mother's womb to the time that you take your last breath, I am with you, is what he's saying. And I just think that's so powerful. So, lovelies, I just wanted to share a really quick um word on the resurrection until next time blessings love you love you and enjoy this holy week and enjoy the lord and you know what take a moment take a moment a synapsis, a synapsis moment synapsis means in one minute two things fuse together and they diffuse just take a minute and just thank you jesus for dying for me that i can have life Thank you, Jesus, that you made your way, your journey this week as we celebrate Good Friday and as we celebrate uh, Resurrection Sunday, as I call it. I don't like to call it Easter. Resurrection Day of the Passover. Just thank him. Once again, until next time, blessings. Bye.